Good morning. I'm weary today. I'm weary today. Not no, not at the, not feeling my best, but um, I'm absolutely weary today. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Please read along with me in the scriptures that we will be covering today. Read along with me. See for yourself what's being read, okay? And also read along because I can make mistakes, and I do make mistakes. So you got to kind of read along with me. It would behoove you to read along with me, to be a Berean, to search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. We're going to begin in Isaiah chapter 1, verses 2, on to verse 6. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord hath spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The Lord is appealing to the innate things rather than the those of man. Very interesting. The ox knows his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doth not know. My people doth not consider. Now, everyone is not God's people, obviously. And this is written in a dispensation uh, under the law, which was by <laughs> uh, faith and works. But see, the Lord is saying that the ox and the ass are in better liking than his own people because at least they have the basics that where it says the ox knoweth his owner and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doth not know, my people doth not consider. Ah, sinful nation. A people laden with iniquity, a seed of evil doers, children that are corruptors, like the cancerous free grace movement people. All of them. You free gracers are a cancer. You're a plague. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. Why should ye be stricken anymore? Ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick. The whole heart faint. These, I, I, I let's read, let's read, finish this out. From the sole of the foot, even onto the head, there's no soundness in it. But wounds and bruises and putrefying sores, they have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. Like I told you, I'm weary today. Uh, over the weekend, I, I saw a video that was just so appalling. You, you free grace people are absolutely disgusting. You, you, guys, you, you guys are vomitous. You, you guys are cancer. Guys like praise that I am. Th th that guy's an idiot. Okay? Jack smack. A clueless idiot. There's this individual by the, that calls himself dude. Mar you know, after the uh, Big Lebowski or whatever that m stupid Hollywood movie is. Okay. These are people who call themselves free gracers. Okay. 
And th they are some of the most disgusting, revolting, obnoxious individuals that you will ever meet. That you will ever see. They're, they're, they're absolutely disgusting. Um, and I saw a video, I mean, not, I, I didn't watch any of their stuff, that I can't handle it. But a brother did a little video, which I, I, I'm not going to like the video, you know why? You know why? The, these guys, with their stupid, just believe, have turned the grace of God into lasciviousness. And you know what, brethren, as it says, one verse in Luke chapter 22, <laughs> Luke chapter 22, and, and hey, hey, Frankie boy, you're right, I hate the grace of your God, your God, one God and three persons, yeah, I hate the grace that your God, the devil, offers. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's no grace at all. You're the only one of these idiots that I respect. <laughs> I don't like you. You don't like me. That's good. Yeah, because I, I, you know, I serve the Lord Jesus Christ. You serve Satan. Okay? At least you and I know where we stand. You know, with these other, with these other idiots. <laughs> these other idiots, man. But in Luke chapter 22... Verse 53. <laughs> when I was daily with you in the temple, you stretched forth no hands against me. But this is your hour in the power of darkness. We have it prophesied in Scripture, brethren, that it's not going to stop. The deception and the heresy is just going to continue to get rampant and rampant and grow as doth a cancer. And free grace, the free grace movement is a cancer. Creating all kinds of false hair of false converts who say who save themselves by their own belief. There's no brokenness, no contrition, no fear of the Lord. <laughs> and calling upon the name of the Lord, the lesser calling out to the greater, they call that works. It's like, well, what's, what is a work? And see, th these guys love Romans chapter 3. They, they do. Now, brethren, you got to remember, when it comes to using the scriptures aright, we mustn't shrink to use the truth of Scripture as God would have us to use it because a bunch, a little group of idiot, heretic devils have twisted it and taken things. For example, the free grace devil scum will avoid Romans 3, verses 10 on to verse 18, which is personal accountability. Okay? Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Elmer Fudd from New York once did a thing where he called it the Romans Road to Damnation. Okay? A, uh, what's his name? Uh, Martin Richling disciple. Just like Frankie Boy is a uh, Martin Richling disciple. Who's Martin Richling? There's a, there's a guy from Maine who did videos about him, and I don't like that guy or trust him either. But, uh, oh yeah, people don't know who that guy is, huh? An actual Jesuit. He, Martin Richling was kind of, I mean, he didn't come up with this nonsense. But he was one that Satan used to, try, to basically inject this brand, this blend of free grace that is plaguing so many of Christianity today, okay? And see, you guys, you don't like that there's someone out there who remembers that. 
But they, they go to Romans chapter 3. And they, they usually, these guys, usually, usually, they, they like, it's right here. Verse 21, and they usually go to about, oh, verse uh, 26. Usually, I mean, they, they do shorten it because less is more with these idiots. But for what they do is they go like they usually start at verse around verse 21 or something like that. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All have sinned. And this is this is absolute truth. But see, what's before that? Personal accountability that is found in Romans 3, verses 10 on to verse 18, which they like to avoid. And see, people can hide themselves. Well, we're all sinners. We're all sinners. We're all sinners. Yeah, we're, we're all sinners. I'm not as bad as that guy, which always comes out with these guys when you press them, okay? <laughs> but they use that as a means to hide. Hide from what? The personal accountability that is addressed in Romans chapter 1, Romans chapter 2, and Romans chapter 3, up to at least verse 18. And the, the remedy to the problem is the Lord Jesus Christ. But see, they go to just this small portion and omit the other things. And they say, well, you know, prayer is a work. Calling on the name of the Lord is a work. Uh, you know, if you were to read the entire chapter of Romans chapter 3, um, the works that are being talked about are the works of the law. The works of the law. Okay? And these guys are really quick to point, well, you're preaching. I had no. You're the one that's preaching work salvation because you save yourself by your own brain power. And you take this out of context and twist it. And this is truth. But see, brethren, we can't be afraid to use it properly because devils have used it improperly. You mustn't fear that. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. Verse 26, to declare, I say, at this time his righteousness, that he might be a justifier, might be just, excuse me, and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. And they stop. They stop. Where is boasting then? It is excluded by what law? Of works, nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore, verse 28, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law, making reference unto the Old Testament law. They don't, they don't like to admit that. They don't like to go to that. And in uh, Romans chapter 3, after verse 18, verses 19 on 20, and 20. Now we know that what sort of things, now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law. You're, you're not saved. You are going to be judged by that very law. Okay? You are. Well, hold on, I'll prove that to you. That every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. First Timothy, open right up to it. First Timothy chapter 1, verses 8. Oh, on to verse 11. But we know that the law is good if a man will use it lawfully. 
Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for men slayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. So, he's talking about the deeds of the law. Okay? And see, these guys will call anything works to justify themselves. Prayer is, prayer is not a work. Calling on the name of the Lord is not a work. That crosses dispensational lines. They like to point that out about how it says in Joel and stuff like that in Romans chapter uh, 10. And these idiots like to say, well, and <laughs> that's one of the funniest, it's not funny. Uh, th these guys will say, will mention rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing. And, and guys like that idiot, Jack Smack, it's like, well, how are they made right in the Garden of Eden? By grace through faith! <laughs> it's, it's, it's laughable. It's laughable, and I, I harp on that one because these guys, that these guys will even tell you that during the kingdom of heaven, it's by grace through faith. But yet they say they're dispensational, or they rightly divide the word of truth. And what they say is God's grace changes, which makes <laughs> no. God's grace is in every dispensation. Okay, yes it is. Without it, we go up like a puff. Okay? What makes a dispensation, an age, a dispensation, is how man is made right with God within that dispensation and or saved. And you can expose these liars on that by simply going yeah, it's like and it dude and dude you ugh. <laughs> these guys are disgusting but see this is their hour and the power of darkness but again you go to the book of Genesis God specifically said don't do that about eating of the fruit of the tree. Don't do that. Guess what? They did. And then all Chadez broke loose. Okay? That, don't do that, is a work. Don't do that. <laughs> I told you not to do that. You did that. Don't do that. That is a work. Okay. Also, they saw God walking in the garden. They saw God. And then when you have a ridiculous idiot like Jack Smack, like that uh, praise that I am, like this foul-mouthed dude guy um, who say it's by grace, to, it's like, are you, are you guys stupid? Are you guys stupid? Well, Jack Smack's an idiot. He's an idiot. Okay, even Elmer from New York harps on that guy. <laughs> Rightfully so. He's an idiot. Okay? He's an idiot. <laughs> I mean, he is. He's a, he's a total... He's a... Uh, he's, uh, all right? But it's clearly... Clearly not by grace through faith. See, people, they've already lied to you. And then they, they, they say things about, like, you know, the kingdom of heaven is by grace through faith during the kingdom of heaven when you're going to be able to see Jesus Christ 
with your own two or four eyes during the kingdom of heaven. You're going to see him. Okay? And these guys talk about faith alone, faith alone, faith alone, blah, 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 blah. But it's like, okay, okay, all right. And, and this is, and you, you guys really can't answer this. Oh, you, you guys do, oh, oh, you guys do, do you know, parouettes. <laughs> going here and there and trying to, you know, justify yourselves. But faith, okay? Uh, Hebrews 11, verse 1. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The Garden of Eden, they saw God. During the kingdom of heaven, you're going to be able to see God on the throne. Again, they say it's by grace through faith from beginning to end. No, it isn't. And they say they're dispensational. No, they're not. No, they're not. Because a way, the way man is made right with God and or saved changes in the dispensation. Okay? That's what makes the dispensation the dispensation. It's not God's grace. God's grace is in every single dispensation. Okay? Grace, boil it down, is unmerited favor. The better blessing the lesser. Okay? Boil it down, simplified. Okay? That's what I, I know there's more to grace than that. But see, th th these these idiots. Free grace or devils. They have no idea. They use their version of grace from their God, Satan, as a license for sin. You ever check out Praise That I Am and his ridiculous little live stream? And, and that dude, he does, he does live streams for like five to seven hours. But here's the thing. Like the video I saw over the weekend, um, which was just so... Why, why am I even surprised? And brother, I'm not going to use your video. Why? Because there's profanity in it! Profanity! Now, now the thing about profanity... Okay, the thing about profanity... Alright? Go, go to Proverbs 17. Go to Proverbs 17. There, there really isn't a structure to this. It's just, you know, <laughs> it's never, it's, it's going to get worse. The Titanic, you know, which was sunk by the Jesuit order, okay? Uh, if it didn't hit an iceberg and they were going to do something with the boilers or blow it up or they would have done something, that ship was going to sink. One way or another, the Jesuit order was going to put that uh, boat on the bottom, or that ship, on the bottom of the ocean floor. That was going to happen so that they could bring about the Federal Reserve Bank. Okay, I know Eric John Phelps is a crazy psychopath. I know there's a lot of questions about Alberto Rivera. I know, I know, but the evidence speaks for itself. Okay, I, I know that. I know that. Okay, but... While the Titanic was sinking, it's, it's doomed. It's going down. But see, the guys in the boiler room, while the Titanic was sinking, kept shoveling coal to the boilers to give these people light, hope that some of them might get saved. But what happened, eventually the bow of the Titanic broke off and the whole innards was exposed, and um, you know you could uh, look up the eyewitness of those who survived it, and the sounds and the horrific sounds of the cracking and the like the you know the sound when it went down in the air going out. That's why the the tail end of the Titanic looked like it did. But the point is, them guys until it broke in half, and then they're you know that was it. And Titanic itself, you know, the rear end of Titanic eventually 
quick, more quickly, more speedily, excuse me, sank because of that. But those guys who were in the boiler room while the Titanic was slowly sinking, still shoveling coals to give the people light until it came to the point where it went under the water. That is the picture of we saints. Victor, the, vi the Lord's going to win. <laughs> the, Lord, the Lord wins. The Lord's going to defeat Rome. The Lord's going to defeat the Vatican. Everything that is false is going to be exposed and defeated eventually. But we have <laughs> steps to go to until that happens. And before we read Psalm, uh, uh, Proverbs 17, uh, you as a saint, and uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you plainly, I hate the free grace movement. I hate it. I hate it with a passion. You know why? Psalm 119, Mem. Psalm 119, Mem. Do you know where that is? Huh? Huh? Do you? You know what? Do you even know what I'm talking about? Huh? Psalm 119, Mem. Find it. Don't, don't, don't get your eyes glazed over because of, now check this out, because of these sesquipedalians. Huh? That, that's a big fancy schmancy word for those who use, overuse big fancy schmancy words. Like these free gracers do. To make themselves look as if they are filled with the Holy Ghost. They are filled with that spirit of Antichrist. So they have to use man's words, man's wisdom, to fool you people that they are saved, and they're not. Not I do not believe at all that any of you free grace adherents are saved. I don't. I don't. The grace of your God. Who's your God? Which, which God? Because most of y'all are, ta-da, Trinitarians. So, <laughs> the grace of, which God? Which one? There's only one God. You're right. <laughs> Thou believest there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. You see, you guys are usually, I, I mean, uh, I don't, I'm not aware offhand of a free gracer who believes in the true Godhead, one God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Okay, no, that, that uh, one God and three <laughs> persons. And that's Satan. You can read about that in Revelation. When the Trinity, which Trinity doesn't appear in Scripture, uh, will be on the earth. What is it? It's the it's the the beast, the false prophet, and the dragon. Okay, but regardless, okay, I might have might the order of that or whatnot. But regardless, that's going to be on the earth during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, you people who get left behind are going to see three physical manifestation of devils. And remember, don't forget this, you people who get left behind. I believe that that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to refer to you, his followers, as Christians. I, I, I truly believe that. That's why. That's another reason why I am so vehemently against using that term to describe a saint. Because I truly believe that during the time of Jacob's trouble. See, those who get left behind and wake up and realize that they have been lied to, okay, the dispensation changes with the redemption of the purchased possession. And that's another thing about these idiots. They talk about, you know, the redemption of the purchased possession. Rapture. <laughs> Show me the word rapture, okay? But they talk about that, and it's like, okay, okay dude, okay, 
then what happens after that? Is it still by grace through faith? Yep, it is. It's like, dude, the dispensation changes immediately with the redemption of the purchased possession <laughs> of faith and works. It reverts back to faith and works during the time of Jacob's trouble. Why? Because the body of Christ is not on the earth. Okay? But see, they can get away with that kind of stuff because people are lazy. They don't want to search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. And because these guys are sesquip adalians, people who overuse big words, okay, using a big word, I love the, I love the irony of that. Usually they got this really weird big word to describe people who overuse big words. To make themselves look something and they use and they do that deceitfully to give you this impression that they're saved that that's the lord doing that their lord their god satan yes but the god of the authorized version no 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 and these are the guys that's like well you use too much scripture yeah and you hardly use any so shut up because if you did, and someone were like, wait a minute, <laughs> wait a minute, what's going on here? And then again, there is a famine in the land of hearing of the words of the Lord. That's in Amos chapter 8. Go find it. Go find it. The fulfillment of that will happen during the time of Jacob's trouble, but we are seeing an aspect of that today. Today. Because some people, you know, just have these this you know, vocabulary, you know, and hey, like I've said, there's nothing wrong with the vocabulary. But these guys overuse it to deceive you. But see, in Psalm 119 Mem, and brother, if you want to put the the verse numbers for Mem in the description, in the comment section, go right ahead. Uh, I'm not. I'm not in the mood today. I'm weary. I'm weary. Oh, how I love thy law. This is Mem, Psalm 119, Mem. Oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Thou through thy commandments has made me wiser than mine enemies. For they are ever with me. Yeah, they are. We are going to go before they do. I have, un I have more understanding than all my teachers. For thy testimonies are my meditation. The implication is that the teachers don't know the scriptures. And you look at the Christians today. <laughs> Which Greek? I won't even get started on that. I understand more than the ancients. Because I keep thy precepts. I have refrained my feet from every evil way. That I might keep thy word. And these free grace idiots will justify, will, will look in Scripture to try to justify any sin. Now some of them, you know, some of them will be like, okay, you, you shouldn't do that, but hey, don't worry if you do. Now think about that. Think about that. It's like, okay, you, you, you should, some of them, some of them do. Some, not all of them. Especially the guys that are associated with that idiot praise that I am. Oh, you talk about it. I'm not going to link his channel. I said his name. That's it. I'm not going to link his channel. I'm not going to do anything. You guys need to stay away from this guy. Okay? I'm not. That's what they want. But I'm telling you, so if one day you're doing whatever and you come across a channel that's praise that I am, avoid it like a stinking turd out there. Avoid it. Get away. Why? He's of the devil. And his panel of Christians? They, they, these guys drop F-bombs without anyone batting an eyelash. Okay? And then they go to justify it. See? They do that. They go to justify it. All right? <laughs> and therein comes the, well, you shouldn't do that. But if you do, don't worry about it because you saved yourself by your own belief. And see, that shows you, that ought to show you that the fear of the Lord is not in these people. Because what are they instilling upon you? 
Okay? You know, when an atheist sees that and has the brain matter to be like, okay, okay, you're supposed to be a Christian, right? But yet, you sound and talk worse than I do. Those guys on the that, that idiot's uh, live streams that he's done, they, they drop F-bombs and without a thing, without anyone batting an eyelash. They talk about sexual things openly, okay? I mean, they are grotesque. They are grotesque, and they justify it. And they'll do things to justify it with the don't judge me. Oh, goodness gracious. There, hey, there's going to be a whole lot of links for you in the description box where we go over all these things in depth. This is a little bit of a rant today, okay? So bear with me, okay? People, you know who has a problem with judgment? Lost people! Fake people have a problem with judgment, okay? They do. Oh, and they go to Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 on to verse 5. Hey, pull the mud out of your own eye, huh? Or, or they love 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 5. God, God's the only one who can judge me. Uh, links, links will be in the description box. If you don't want to watch those, if you don't want to listen to the truth, then go ahead and roll you up a big old fatty, get yourself some John Daniels, and inoculate yourself with the lies from Satan, and enjoy your life. Because this is the best you're ever going to get, and you're on your way to hell. Okay? All right? All right? But, I mean, they, these, these guys, they have a problem with judgment. And it's like, are you a fruit inspector? Yes. You know why? Because I'm commanded to be. And they don't like that. You pull the motor. See, and, and the brother in the one video touched on this. Judgment begins at the house of God with you. Okay? You judge yourself first according to a perfect standard. Hence, because... You are judging yourself according to the perfect standard. You, as a saint, are to judge others by the very same standard. They, they kind of they don't like to acknowledge that. I, like I said, I judge myself first. Okay? Am I perfect? Of course not. Of course not. Do I sin daily? Yes. But see... I judge myself first. Okay? And see, they, they come around with it, well, because you have no right to judge, because you do the same things. They take, again, Romans chapter 2 out of context, which is talking about the pot calling the kettle black. Two lost people judging each other according to their own standard themselves because they are gods. It's vanity. And see, that's what 1 Corinthians 4 is talking about. Judge nothing before the time until the Lord come. Until you are saved, you can't rightly judge at all. You can't. And that's what Romans 2 is talking about. And see, these guys will cling to that to justify anything they want to. And see, they're getting away with it because of the willful ignorance of the people. That's how you guys are able to get away with this. And because you're, you're sesquip, sesquip Adelians, guys who overuse big fancy schmancy rhetoric and words to give off this illusion that you're a wise sage or saint, you, you, you glaze the people over. You make them drunken with the wine of the whore. And it gets burdensome sometimes. Because you know what? The truth of the matter is, nobody wants to really hear the truth. And that's the sign of the times. But see, that doesn't mean that we as saints are to stop 
The only way we are to stop is when the Lord's like, that's it. Or the Titanic goes down. But finishing off in Mem, Psalm 119, verse, verse 101 again, okay? There's a little hint. Go find it, okay? I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy word. I have not departed from thy judgments, for thou hast taught me. How sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through thy precepts, the authorized version, I get understanding departing from evil, therefore I hate every false way. And the free grace movement is false. Usually, 99% of the time, these guys are Trinitarian. They claim to be rightly dividing the word of truth, but yet it is by grace through faith from beginning to end, hence they're not rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? And there's no difference between them and the world. When you have an atheist who's like, will say to one of these guys, it's like, you're, you're no, you know. They instinctively know the lost, that, okay, you're calling yourself a Christian. You, they instinctively know that there's supposed to be a difference at least there. And I'm telling you, if you ever hear these guys interact with each other, and the way they speak you shall know them by their fruits. No, and then they, you know, and we all make mistakes, yes. Hey, if you drop a, toe, uh, a big couch on my toe, there might be a chance I might utter a profanity by, like, ah! Okay, but see, the guilt, the shame that the Lord heard what I said, okay? Or, or you, you're trying to hammer something, and unless you're David Daniels, and you smack your hand with the hammers, ah! <laughs> okay? They're, okay, the, yet yeah, we have moments. We have weak moments. Yes, we do. But see, a saint, someone who is saved, when you utter a profanity, whatever, there's no excuse for it. Okay? There are reasons why that happens, like I just discussed. But there are, there's no excuse for it. These guys, they don't even bat an eyelash, dude. They don't. They just... Okay? And here's the thing. Why would a saint subject themselves to that? Why? In something that is claiming to be a refuge... For Christians, but yet there's no distinction between that filth and the filth of the world. How could a saint endure that? How? I don't understand. An example, and this will never never happen. Okay, and and you you wicked devils, you go ahead and use your little. Uh, uh, potty training, schoolyard tactics. Like, You're a coward. Yeah, I'm. I, what fellowship? What concord hath light with darkness? Huh? What? Why? Why would I ever do that? Why would I? I, I remember Eric Lyon fart. He's like, oh, you're too scared to to talk to, to debate with me. It's like, dude, I'm not even gonna waste my time with you. I'm not going to waste my time with any of these people. Okay? And you go, go run ahead. Go be a little infinitesimal juvenile delinquent that you are. Okay? And use your little... You, you, guys are, you guys are disgusting. You really are. You guys, you guys are absolutely revolting and disgusting. But see, that's what they resort to. They're not saved. And how could, so if we're, just an example, if a saint, if I were like, just an example, this will never happen, but if I were in there and I heard like that dude starting dropping F-bombs and bullying 
somebody there, the, the, the brother was talking about, and the guy was bullying the other guy, and the other guy was taking that. The dude who stayed in that thing, you should have, you should have. Okay, it's like, and number one, a saint should have been like, hey, watch your filthy mouth. Okay, watch your mouth. The way you serve Christ reflects him. It's, that's the thing. These guys are giving you people this impression, this idea that any you can do anything. There's no restraint. It doesn't matter. You can have your cake and eat it too. You can behold madness and folly and still do all this stuff. But a saint would have been like, hey, dude, shut up. Shut your mouth, you scum. What, what's wrong with you? And then if they can, and the, the, the one guy who literally his name is dude, I guess not his name, but that's what he calls himself, I was like just rampantly bullying this one guy and using F-bombs as if it were nothing. The, a saint should have been like, I'm out of here, dude. And just get away. Get away. Okay. Free gracers are lost. They're not saved. They have another gospel and another Jesus, and the God they serve is not the true God. And they're damning you people to hell. And they're growing. They're growing. The cancer is spreading. The cancer is spreading. Psalm 119 A.N. I have done judgment and justice. See? Judgment. Yes, judge yourself first. But see, in judging... And see, that's not a one and done thing. See, that's, that's another misconception that these devils bank on. These devils are banking on your ignorance of Scripture. And because... Generally, Christians and Christianity are willfully ignorant of the truth of Scripture. They're getting away with murder. Absolute murder. They're getting away with things that even 20 years ago they would have never gotten away with. But they're getting away with it now because things are getting worse. The Titanic is slipping. It's almost broken in half. Okay? Things are getting worse. And it's going to continue to get worse. But see, judgment. These guys, oh, I, I've, unfortunately, I've, I've, I've listened to some of these guys. I've, I've had to, okay? And it's like, these guys can't stand judgment. But yet they do it all the time to each other. But when it comes to something, to a little pet thing of theirs, they judge me. Only God can judge me from 1 Corinthians chapter 4. We, we, we've debunked that. The scriptures have debunked that. Uh, thoroughly. People, I don't care who you are. Who hates judgment? Guilty, lost people. Okay? When someone says, don't judge me, they are doing that to protect the sin that they know that they shouldn't do. Okay? We've talked about it before. There is a legitimate time where you could say that. For example, two saints. Okay? I'm a meditarian. You're a vegan. Okay? Why? I don't know. But whatever. Okay? You want to be a vegan? I want to be a meditarian? Scripturally, Romans 14, I cannot say judge you and you're standing with the Lord because you're a vegan and you can't do that to me because I'm a meditarian. If ever there's a moment when you could say that legitimately, that would be a moment. But see, these guys never employ that kind of thing. It's always to protect their sin. All right? And also, also, my one day that I want to give to the Lord is what? Wednesday. You want to do it on Friday. You want to do it on the actual Sabbath? Act yourself up. I cannot judge you 
for what day you decide to dedicate unto the Lord. That's another thing. And see, these, these, it, these devils, man, they will take that truth and then apply that to December 25th. <laughs> I've encountered that. That little putz from Indiana did the same thing that I just mentioned. Okay? Justifying worshiping the Vatican by saying, hey, hey, December 25th, that's the day I want to give unto the Lord. <laughs> of course you do. Of course you do. Something that is proven pagan, satanic, that comes from Rome. Oh yeah, I'm making all kinds of friends today, aren't I? <laughs> I don't care. I care about my father and my brethren. Okay? People. People. Lost people have a problem with judgment. Never forget that. Never forget that. I have done judgment and justice. Leave me not to mine oppressors. Be surety for thy servant for good. Let not the proud oppress me. Mine eyes fail for thy salvation and for the word of thy righteousness. Deal with thy servant according unto thy mercy and teach me thy statutes. I am thy servant. Give me understanding, departing from evil, that I may, that I may know thy testimonies. It is time for thee, Lord, to work. They have made void thy law. Therefore I love thy commandment above gold, yea, above fine gold. Therefore I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right. And I hate every false way. I do. I hate Rome. I hate free grace. Get, d d d d by the way, find free grace in Scripture. Justified freely by his grace, yes. Find free Free grace. Free grace. Find it. Find it. Come on. There's your, there's your challenge for you. Find free grace in the authorized version. Justified freely by his grace. Justified freely by his grace. Okay? okay. A reminiscent like I was talking with a brother, it's like plead the blood. Plead the blood. Okay? Even Ruckman did, you know, pleading the blood. Plead the blood. Find that. Find it. Find it. It's not there. Good luck. Hey, you find me plead the blood. Verbatim. Plead the blood. I'll give you a thousand dollars of money I don't have. Find free grace. Same thing. But what does that matter? God's not a God of specificity. <laughs> God's not a God of exclusivity. <sighs> Proverbs 17. Today is the 17th. I, I did, man. That, that, that video, I saw that. That just kind of that just kind of messed with me. It's never going to end. I mean, it will end. But while we're here still, brethren, I mean, we're going to get, we're going to be redeemed. But it's going to continually get worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And then we get redeemed. And then all Chades is going to break loose for seven years. And these same guys who are preparing you people with the just believe and receive nonsense free grace are going to damn so many of you to hell when you take the mark in your right hand or in your forehead. Oh, and remember, you're being conditioned today to believe that, hey, you can cut it off because, hey, if your eye offend the right or your hand offend the or your foot, right? So you can cut it off or cut it. No, it doesn't work that way. You take that mark of the beast, you're going to hell. That's the only time in Scripture that you're guaranteed a bus ticket to hell. Okay? And that's the inevitable thing. That's the long-term effect that these guys are preparing. You See, free grace is here is a religiosity for you people who are going to get left behind and be damned to hell. Okay? 
It, it's also there to puff up your sagging sin suit to make you feel that you are right with God while all the while doing contrary to what he says. <laughs> all right? But uh, Proverbs 17, verses 7 on to verse 20. Excellent speech becometh not a fool, much less do lying lips a prince. Fool says in his heart there is no God. Free gracers are fools. Hey, they claim that they believe in God, and what God do they believe in? One God and three persons? Most of them do. Okay? But see, what is their standard? They are their own standard. You know how you know that? Don't judge me! You can't judge me! Only... <laughs> Dude! Okay! I judge myself by a perfect standard. Alright? Have you not read 1 Corinthians chapter 6? Have you not read that before? Apparently not. No, see, you guys have. But see, you're not letting people know that. Of course, that's how that works. All right? I judge myself daily. And it's a continual thing. It's a continual thing of examining yourself daily. And because it's an examination, a process that is continual, Hence, because you are yourself are judging yourself by the perfect standard, that means that you're to judge them as well. But see there again, the free gracer. They claim, oh, they claim, believe in Jesus. Which Jesus? <laughs> which, which Jesus? <laughs> one God in <laughs> three persons. Yeah, the one in the middle. Hey, hey, which finger is that? Okay, yeah. Yeah, but they, they, they claim to believe in Jesus, believe in God, and all that non nonsense that they talk about. Yeah, yeah, because they're Trinitarians. Like I said, I have not, to my knowledge, met or am aware of any free gracer who believes in the true God being one God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. I have not met one, to my knowledge. Okay? I haven't. Usually Trinitarians, just like their mother, wrong. So, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. An excellent speech becometh not a fool. They are their own standard. And the proof is, when you bring up something of Scripture, and they say to you, don't judge me. I, I, I'm, I'm using the script. don't judge me. Uh, you take the mode out of your own eye. Oh, uh, dude, I, 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 I am. I do. And the same thing that I'm judging myself by, I'm judging you by. You have no room to talk. Yes, I do. Because I'm judging myself by this very standard. Therefore, I'm judging you by the same standard. See how that works? But these guys don't like that. They don't want that. And then they throw flippantly what about works. What's that? Oh, what's that thing? A backloading works into salvation. What are works? Prayer, calling on that. No. The works that are discussed about in, in Romans chapter 3 are the works of the law, which no one can keep. <laughs> no one can keep them, brethren. See, saints know this. And, and like I said, sometimes you get weary with it. It's like, what's the point? There are still people out there whom the Lord is going to save. And, sin, and until that time, until we are either dead with the Lord or we get caught up, until the Lord put the stop on it, we are to press forward. Let's continue. A gift is as a precious stone in the eyes of him that hath it. Whithersoever it turneth, it prospereth. Jesus Christ is the headstone of the corner. He is precious in our eyes. Okay? And he is the one who turns us whithersoever he wants us to go. But not at gunpoint. We have to make the, the choice. We have free will. Okay? He that covereth a transgression seeketh love. But he that repeateth a matter separateth very friends. It's like, 
another one of these guys' tactics is that they will bring up things from the past that people are forgiven of, and they're moving forward, but see, they want to bring that guy back and keep them here grounded in a past failure or sin and ground them and shackle them. Okay? A reproof entereth more into a wise man, one who fears the Lord, than a hundred stripes into a fool. A fool who says in his heart there is no God. Oh, with their lips they permit. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, it's all about Jesus, Jesus. Which one? But confront them on their doctrines. Truly. Truly. Don't judge me. Who are you to judge me? It's like a reflex action with them. <laughs> I, I, like I said, they're a little spiel. I'm judging me first through the scripture, the authorized version, and because that is continually doing that. It's not a one and done thing. See that? That's another misconception. It's like, okay, I judge myself once. Okay, now I can no 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 no. No. You see, this is that you know the renewing of the mind thing. Okay. Alright? It's a daily thing. That, that you saying to me, that hurts. That hurts. And see, the longer you go, the more familiar Familiar. Familiar spirits. Familiar. Okay? The more familiar you can become, you think you can become, and, you, and let that self-examination falter. Where the longer you walk, you ought to be even more vigilant in self-examination. An evil man seeketh only rebellion. And that's what these fake racers do. They seek ways to justify sin. Therefore, a cruel messenger shall be sent against him. Who are you to judge me? How cruel. You using the scriptures to rebut the nonsense that you guys spew. Let a bear robbed of her whelps meet a man, rather than a fool in his folly. Whoso rewardeth evil for good, evil shall not depart from his house. <laughs> Woe unto those who call evil good and good evil. That's free gracers. Free grace is a cancer. And in my honest opinion, I believe that it is the most dangerous of heresies. That exists right now. I really do. Because it's it's not, it's, you know, you have a free grace, a Baptists, Methodists, uh, a German Catholics, we'll go figure on that one. Okay, Presbyterians, I don't know if I already said that, uh, whatnot, you know, it's, it's a movement that has infected every, a majority of who we in witnessing and talking with people that is what we run into in the majority. Okay? In the majority. Catholics are Catholics. Okay? Catholics are crazy. Okay? Uh, uh, Pentecostals, it's like, okay, blah, 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 get, get, get away from me. But see, the subtleness of this, just believe and receive. Free grace. You guys use, as a, use it as a license. Use it as a license. And if you ever, and please don't, please don't, people, brethren, please don't. If you ever listen to Praise That I Am, that imbecile and his those twits that he has on that whole thing that he does, um, you'd be like, wow. Wow. This is evil. These guys are evil. God doesn't even know when the New Testament began. He, he's like, a, and, and another thing about that praise that he ain't guy. Um, he, he has, he has <laughs> there's this one Jesuit dude, apparently, who um, corrected him and he takes correction from and learns from a Jesuit. <laughs> oh. The beginning of strife is as when one letteth out water. Therefore, leave off contention before it be meddled with. 
And that's all. Dude, these guys in their live streams are all about contention. Well, it's a debate. Do a word search on debate in scripture. And get back to it. Okay? He that justifieth the wicked, and he that condemneth the just, even they both are an abomination to the Lord. You guys are willing to uh, justify a guy who claims to... Like, a uh, perfect example, Shimon the Sorcerer. Now, to uphold their doctrine in Acts chapter 8, they have to tell you that Shimon the Sorcerer was a saved man because he believed. But if you keep reading, Peter clearly says... Your heart is not right in the sight of God. And Shimon himself doesn't take it upon himself to go to the Lord himself personally. He's like, you pray for me. What more evidence do you need that Shimon the sorcerer was a lost man? But see, in order to uphold their heresy, they have to cling to Shimon the sorcerer was a saint. No, he wasn't. Perfect example. They say that man in Acts chapter 8. Go find it. They, the free gracer, will come to that and say, he just believed he's saved. But Peter called him lost. So, hey, hey, you guys are working for the Vatican anyway. Are you going to say that Peter was wrong? <gasps> that's that's like big buku, buku bad for a Catholic, which most of these guys are. Coadjutors, not open. Wherefore is there a price in the hand of a fool to get wisdom, seeing he hath no heart to it? I, I like that verse. Look at that verse. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. Wisdom, the fear of the Lord. He hath no heart to it, to get the fear of the Lord. Because he wants to find and establish his own heart. And as we've proven on many occasions, the scriptures tell us that if you trust in your own heart, you're a fool. <laughs> <laughs> okay? A friend loveth at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. A man void of understanding striketh hands, and becometh surety in the presence of his friend. He loveth the transgression that loveth strife. And, you know, like we addressed on Friday's video, these guys who all they do is attack... They love their, their, they love transgression. Why? Because they love strife. They create strife. They create contention. Okay, like the one idiot from England, like that one crazy uh, Canadian guy. Okay, who tried to put a wedge between brethren. Okay, all right. <laughs> he loveth transgression that loveth strife. And he that exalteth his gate seeketh destruction. Seek it, destruction, exalteth his gate. I'm saved because I just believe. Like I said, you can scratch these guys, and it always comes out with them. I'm better, I'm not as bad in so, as so and so. That always comes out in one form or another when you confront these people. Do you trust in your heart that you're saved? I trust in what the scriptures say about salvation today. That it's in Christ. He is my salvation. And you know what? He lives in me. He don't live in these free grace people. He doesn't. And if he did, you could, I mean, remember, remember, saved people can make mistakes. But you're, if you were to remain in the realm of free grace and actually being a saint, your, your, li your life would be a shambles. Your fruit would stink. I can only imagine what kind of turmoil a saint might have by wanting to continue to remain in something that deep down 
they know is false. But what's making that decision? The Lord doesn't force you to do anything. He doesn't work like that. You have to make the right choice. And if a brother or a sister, a saint, were, I mean, wanting to remain in that realm, that disgusting realm, and remember, the Lord ain't going to you know, hold you at gunpoint to do anything. I can only imagine what kind of turmoil your life will be. Come out from amongst them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And ye shall be my sons and daughters. Okay? Alright? But if you want to still mingle in that because they are your friends? Your friends. A friend loveth at all times. And a brother is born for adversity. Verse 19 again. He loveth transgression that loveth strife. And he that exalteth his gates seeketh destruction. He that hath a froward heart findeth no good. Findeth no good. And there is none good but who? God. And he that hath a perverse tongue falleth into mischief. <laughs> in Revelation chapter 17, in Revelation chapter 17, verses 1 under verse 5, see, that which is against Christ is of Satan. Okay? There's only two options. Heaven or hell. Okay? Satan has given a smorgasbord of religions, faith, traditions, and all this stuff. Um, it's either white or black, light or dark. There is no option C. You're either saved or you're lost. But see, a drunkenness comes upon people. A pedophagging kind of stupor. Revelation 17, verses 1 on verse 5. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Verse, 17, uh, verse 15, look across. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, this is talking about Rome, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Okay? So waters, especially in this context, is a reference unto people. Okay? And the whore. This is talking about Rome. The Vatican. And anyone saying anything other than that Rome is Mystery Babylon, they are working for the Vatican. Okay? Kent Helvin, Steve Anderson, okay? Eric Lionheart. Praise that I am. Okay? Alright? Rome. Rome is Mystery Babylon. Anyone telling you otherwise is an agent of the Vatican. Yeah, the, uh, a novice could be ignorant. Okay, I'll give you that. True. But you correct that novice immediately. Say, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay? Let's go to the scriptures. Okay? Someone actively going and saying that it's, well, it's America. Are you st stupid? Stupid. No, it's Rome. Okay? And she's the mother of harlots. Free grace. The free grace movement is harlotry. Just like their mother. And the free grace movement is traceable to Vatican II! Oh, gee, go figure that one out. Okay? Go figure that one out. Yes, there were flavors of it before Vatican II, because remember, Vatican II, I believe, was somewhere in the 60s. But it's what it is today. 
is ecumenical pond scum filth. And the only one that the free graces are against are against the saints who truly rightly divide the word of truth and truly preach the true God, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is God our Father. Not the one in the middle. Ugh. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 under 21. Ephesians 5, 15 under 21. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools who say in their heart there is no God, but as wise, fearing the Lord, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Departing from evil. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. And be not drunk with wine. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication? Mm. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the capital S Spirit, which is the Lord himself. See, and again, again, Scripture, you can drink alcohol. Okay? I know a lot of people have problems with that. Okay? The, you can drink alcohol. All right? Don't get drunk. All right? All right? That, that's, that's scriptural. I mean, you can deny that if you want, but you'd be wrong. Scripture proves that. Right there. Be not drunk. You can have a little wine. Okay? You can. But see, when you start to say, well, I can have a little wine, and then you use that, and then you get drunk, then you're in sin. It, you can liken that to the same people as like, who knowingly, in a sinful manner, seek to justify Rome by saying, well, December 25th is the day I choose to worship. Of course it is, you vain little egotistical pompous jerk. Of course it is. Of course it is. Yeah. Hey, the grace of God and too lasciviousness, man. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your hearts uh, in your heart to the Lord giving thanks always for all things unto God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God Paul was all about the fear of the Lord okay all right like well you well, you have no right to judge blah 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 I judge myself I'm judging you by the same standard that I judge myself. Thank you very little. See, a lost person hates judgment. One who knows they are guilty hates judgment. That's why, that's why these guys are always throwing around. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. You can't judge me. Only God can judge me. Okay. Verse 3 in Revelation 17. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Names of blasphemy. Presbyterian. Methodist. Lutheran. <laughs> okay. Episcopalian. Baptist, Pentecostal. These are denominations. King James Bible believing Christian. These are denominations. These are denominations. Hmm. Demon nations, huh? And again, my dear. 
King James Bible believing Christians in wanting to be different you have become exactly the very thing that you say that you are against you have become a denomination of Christianity period period okay you are you have become just another like non-denominational well that's another that's a denomination Presbyterian it's a denomination Baptist a denomination is Christ divided well apparently you look at Christianity but yes 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 look King James Bible believing Christianity is just another denomination please prove me wrong as you're congregating in your little clique and the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color well Rome's colors are gold and white um, that's a facade a thing to throw you off when you see the procession of the cardinals and bishops okay and even Francis who before you know according to a video now I didn't really look up into this but this was interesting I thought at least to think about apparently Francis the Giorgio or whatever his name was is uh, before he was the head of the figurehead of Roman Catholicism apparently he was a bouncer or an enforcer <laughs> and remember Francis is saying that people are good stupid remember Arturo Sosa the black pope the head of the Jesuit order he's the one who runs Rome okay he's the most dangerous man on earth today okay and that's the man who these guys work for okay and the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet colored and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Well, you know, while we were in Ephesians chapter 5, go back to Ephesians chapter 5. Okay. Ephesians chapter 5. Now you got to remember, we, we as saints, we make all kinds of mistakes. But see, we repent of those mistakes. We strive to not do that. But we do. Okay? And while well, fake racers, not some of them, some of them do, it's like, hey, you, you, you shouldn't do that. But, but see, they do this. They say, but don't worry if you do. Now, in reality, if you are a saint, saved, sealed until the day of redemption, you're not going to lose what isn't yours. Salvation, because it isn't yours. It belongs unto the Lord, the Lord who dwells within you. Okay? That is true. But see, the Lord in you will lead you and guide you and... You as a saint, you want to do what pleases the Lord. So when you mess up, you as a saint, I know my, my, my dear dear brother, uh, dear brother from Ohio, that, that sweetheart, he, he, he sins and he's devastated. I sin and I'm devastated. Okay? All right? Sin hurts. Sin is horrible. But see, we sin. We can't help that. But see, that's where God's true grace comes in. These guys turn their God's grace into lasciviousness, a license. Free gracers have no true concept of what actual scriptural grace is. None. <coughs> because if they did, because if they did, for, for starters, where are these people who rebuke these guys for speaking like toilets? Where are these guys rebuking these guys for talking about grotesque 
sexual acts in their life streams. Where are they? Hmm? Don't judge me. Oh, you're a Pharisee. See, and right there, right, right there, dear friend. Right there. You claim you believe in God. And you do yourself. Because you guys, you free gracers, are of your father the devil. Okay? When a saint comes along, be like, wait a minute, you guys are devils. Don't judge me. Who are you to, to pull the moat out of your eye? Only God can judge me. Okay, here we go again. That's why with the majority of these people that we encounter, um, we don't get that far. Even when we're gentle, you know, and, you know, not pushing that hard. I mean, <laughs> I've done that before. I'm guilty of that. Oh, yeah, I mean, because these guys are like, you know, a saint and a free gracer, at the end of the day, we, we, don't, we can't get along. Now, saved people, sometimes because of the sagging sin suit, can't get along either, okay? That happens. We've got scriptural evidence on that. But at the end of the day, like I said, if a saint who I don't, like or don't like me if a saint out of desperation like Brad I need you I'd be there for him I'd be there for him okay why because even though the flesh has gotten in the way we have the same father these guys have the same father as well and they hate each other oh but no they love each other right you don't even know what that is Ephesians chapter 3 Verses uh, 5, excuse me, Ephesians chapter 5, verses 3 on to verse 10. But fornication, and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, foolish behaving, speaking, as if you say in, the heart, in your heart there is no God, you're dropping F-bombs without even batting an eyelash publicly, giving people the idea that God's okay with your stupid free grace nonsense, that God's okay with you speaking like that. That's what they're conveying to you people. Okay? All right? That's what they're conveying to you. That it's okay. No, it isn't. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, guilty, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. Okay, myself. Filthiness. Guilty. Foolish talking. Guilty. Nor jesting. Guilty. Which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. I've done that. But see... See, I judge myself. It's like, Lord, forgive me. I'm sorry. Because the way I serve my father reflects him. And, and y'all y'all think that God's this teddy bear, mushy gushy bear hug you. Like, hey, Jesus up in heaven. You, you guys, when you're at that great white throne of judgment, you guys are in for a rude awakening. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, which free gracers, especially the ones that do these live streams, they're whoremongers, okay? I, you know, in a setting like that, I mean, outside witnessing to people, yes, I'll talk to a Pentecostal. Yes, I'll, I'll talk to the Methodist, even though they, they know who I am and they, they uh, you know, you can't be here. It's like, oh yeah, you can kick me off your property? <laughs> or, you know, the one uh, uh, Hispanic Catholic lady or the one, the people over here, you know, unfortunately because I'm in the, the locale. And, and the one over there that I keep forgetting about, they, they know who I am. <laughs> but, I mean, outside witnessing, yes, I will speak to these people. But see, in this construct of where supposed saved people are supposed to be fellowshipping, and discussing things of doctrine, which turn into, which turn into filthiness, foolish talking, jesting. Okay. See, 
a saint's not going to do that. It's whorish when they take all these people in that construct. It's whoredom. Okay? It's, it's this idea. It's like, okay, you bring the lost into the church, the body. Uh, no! No! You go to them. You don't bring them in by you. Example. If we had a little scripture study in the living room over there. Okay, myself, a couple of the brethren, and maybe a sister as well, you know, at where you don't bring someone who's lost into the church, the body, not a building. But what do the buildings do? All are welcome. The buildings, like these fake gracers, spread their legs and let everyone come into them. What's wrong with y'all? <laughs> For this ye know, that no whoremonger nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater, whoremongering, uncleanness, covetousness, they're all forms of idolatry, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words. Sesquip Adelians. I know that's a big fancy schmancy word for those who <laughs> overuse big fancy schmancy words like these guys do. The irony of that. I, I think I even mentioned that. Uh, or no, somebody else uh, it was. I didn't mention it uh, in the comment section over there. Uh, said something about that because I put the definition in the community section. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. For ye were sometimes darkness. But now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the capital S spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Proving, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Now think about that. When you got these guys dropping F-bombs, making lewd jokes, uh, talking about sexual content in a humorous, jesting fashion, what is that conveying to people? It's conveying that we're Christian. It's like that, that idiot, uh, what's his name, Welsh guy with the dreadlocks from corn. He's like, look, we're Christians and we're not judging you. We're Christians and look what we do. And like I said, an atheist is like, wait, 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 wait. You're, you're claiming to be a Christian, but you're doing things that I won't even do. It's like the one atheist guy once said, it's like, you know, with the, these Christians, it's like, aren't you supposed to be preaching to me about righteousness and being better than me? And he said it in a snide way, but his point was accurate. It's like, look, you're claiming to be a Christian. Aren't you at least supposed to be preaching something that is above what I think? and how I behave, but yet at the same time, you're acting worse than I am! And, yeah, and one of the things is like, you get a Muslim who would see some, I mean, I'm sure if a Muslim were to see the, that praise that I am idiot and what goes on in his nonsense, he'd be like, yeah, and you guys think this is real. Well, you can't judge me. Yes, I can. Because I judge myself by a perfect standard. And boy, I'm judging you according to that perfect standard. The same one that I judge myself by. Amen. Amen. And y'all stink. Okay? Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Colossians 2. Colossians 2. I know, like I said, brethren, I, I woke up this morning and I was just weary. Weary. Colossians 2, 6 under verse 14. 
As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. These guys give you the impression that being as carnal as you want to be and justify, well, I just believed and received and it's not going to affect my salvation. <laughs> you're right. Because you, you're delusional. You saved yourself. Yeah, good luck. Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as ye have been taught, abounding therewith, therein with thanksgiving. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Godhead. Spirit, soul, and body. Okay? The Holy Ghost, the Father, and the Word. And these three are one. You know, 1 John 5, 7, the Johannian comma, which the Bibles take out, and they claim that it's added, it's not in the oldest and best. Okay, which Greek are you talking about? Kind of line there. Okay, these three are one. The Holy Ghost is the Spirit. God the Father is the soul. The Word, Jesus Christ, made flesh, is the body. One God. Spirit, soul, and body. You and I, we're made in the image of God. Like I said, I have yet to encounter, to my knowledge, a free gracer who isn't a one God and three persons, just like their mother, Rome. Okay? <clears throat> and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. What does that mean? Under the law, circumcision was a visual kind of thing, a sign, a seal of the thing there. But today, the circumcision made without hands is Jesus Christ in you the hope of glory, the seal until the day of redemption. See, that's where it is. God dwells within the saved believer. Hence, anything we touch is not going to affect his salvation. Under the law, where you kept your own soul, you touched something that circumcision made without hands wasn't there as it is today. That's why when you got these guys saying it's by grace through faith from beginning to end, I mean, you can dismantle that nonsense throughly very easily. See, they have one advantage. You people. You people generally are ignorant of the truth. And when rightly, and see, again, they do the thing, well, rightly dividing. Rightly dividing, he says. Okay. But yet, you say that it's by grace of faith in the Garden of Eden. That's not rightly dividing. So God's grace changes in the dispensation. God's grace is there in every dispensation. The way a man is made right with God and or saved is what changes. God's grace is always there. If it isn't, we wouldn't be here. See, you got to watch out for that, guys. You hear these guys, well, rightly divided, rightly divided. And also, too, sometimes I've even heard uh, a couple of them, you know, rightly dividing, meaning uh, separating the Bible from the other. <laughs> that, that, that one's lame. That's lame. Okay. Let's continue. Let's continue. Buried with him in baptism, where also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. You being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together, made alive, quickened together with him, for having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances, reference on to the law, that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Let's read verse 15. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a shoe of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Okay? 
And of course, proving what is good. Okay? Romans, we've got to read Romans 12, 1 on, to, 1 on to 2. Okay? We have to. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, which these fake gracers, especially that praise that he ain't idiot, and those guys on his panel, did they are conforming to this world. They are of the world. Therefore, the world heareth them. They're not saved. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And these guys give you the impression that it's good to be in the sin, uh, justify anything, and just make grace into a lasciviousness, a license to sin. Don't worry about it. And, and it is exhibited in their behavior. The way you serve the Lord reflects him. And the way they serve their God, their father, the devil, reflects him. Christianity, as it is today, is a reflection of its father, the devil. Which these guys are. Okay? Okay? And, and let's go. We're almost done. We're almost done. Uh, you know, like I said, this is more of a rant video, more of a rant video, and like I said, we, there'll be links galore for you in the description box. You don't want to watch them? That's your problem. That's your problem. Not mine. Colossians 4, 5 and 6. Walk in wisdom, fear the Lord, toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace, Seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. We talked about that on Friday. Okay? How you ought to answer every man. You don't have to answer every question. You don't. Especially when someone doesn't want to hear it. Okay? And 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Okay? And, and you, you, free grace adherents, you, you, you really need to read... First Corinthians chapter 6 in its entirety. Okay? We're just touching on verses 9 on to verse 11. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor adult idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, guys who act like ladies, okay? Nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves who boot the door and climb up some other way, nor covetous, who wants subscribers and popularity, nor drunkards, drunker, drunk with the wine that comes from Rome, nor revilers, reviling the truth of God, nor extortioners, pay to play. That's another thing that that idiot uh, praise that I am does. It's another thing. He boasts. He, I, I seen it. He did what Mark the Messenger does. When someone gave him a donation, he, he put the amount up there and publicly... <laughs> uh, uh, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. Distinction. Difference. Okay? But ye are washed. But ye are sanctified. But ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the capitalists. Spirit of our God. See, verse 11 is noting to be other. Dude, these, these guys that you see on these things, these live streams, they just have talk. They use rhetoric, big words. They are carnal. They are worldly. They are fleshly. They are lost. They are not saved. Titus chapter 2, and you're right. I am just quoting scripture. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am just quoting scripture to you. You betcha, pal. You betcha. Ugh. Titus 2, 11 on to the close of the chapter. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation 
has appeared to all men. It's available to all. Yes, it is. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteousness, and godly in this present world. Oh, but you watch that praise that I'm not, that praise that I am, and guys like him... There are some of these free gracer twits that at least, you know, the, the Frankie boy does that, I think. I think he did, at least. He's like, okay, you shouldn't be doing that. But it's like, don't, you know, he was more like, don't beat yourself up over it. That, he's, he's lost. He's a devil. He's neck deep into it. But, you know, the thing about him is that at least he's a little bit more. <laughs> he, he tries a little bit more, okay, at least with the facade, okay? Yeah, I mean, these guys, like, you know, that Jack Smack guy, again, that, that guy's an idiot. I, I really don't know how anyone could fall for that guy. I really don't. A saint won't. A saint won't. Okay? A saint won't. Okay? A saint won't. Maybe for a little bit, but, you know, you hear of the lukewarmness, the, the flaccid thing that he calls teaching. Uh, it's like... Dude, <laughs> dude, I, I, I get, I'd learn more doctrine if uh, Dave Murphy were teaching me. <laughs> okay, wow. All right, verse thirteen, looking for that blessed hope and that glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. The blessed hope, Jesus Christ is our hope. Okay who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Rebuke with all authority. Rebuke with all authority. I am. What authority is that? Oh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, 16 and 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. First Corinthians 15. And, and, here, and here's something that a saint... And, and brother, this is something that I believe you have <laughs> to look forward to. <laughs> you know who you are. And this is something that I, I needed to be reminded of today myself. Because dude, it gets, this isn't about me. And see, when you start having moments where it's like, what's the point? What's the point? 1 Corinthians 15, 57 and 58. But thanks be to God who giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain, and again, thank you. I, I needed that today. I need that every once in a while, you know. And that's that's where you know I I, I have brethren who can encourage and will encourage. And we are to and see as we addressed in Friday's video, you know, a lot of these guys start with the attack, whereas saints are to first begin with to build up. Okay? The order is wrong with these guys. The order is wrong with these guys. Because now you, you go to uh, Jeremiah chapter 7. Go to Jeremiah chapter 7. We're almost done. It's like 95, 97 degrees out there or something like that. As you can see, there's glittering on my, glycerine on my face. <laughs> Jeremiah 7, verses 8 on to verse 10. 
and, and right here. Behold, ye trust in lying words that cannot profit. Now, profit, profit. Will ye steal? The thief cometh not but to what? To kill, murder, to kill, to steal, and destroy, right? Check your margin. Is there a reference for that in John chapter 10? Is there? Will ye steal, murder, and commit adultery, and swear falsely, and burn incense unto Baal, and walk after other gods whom ye know not, and come and stand before me in this house which is called by my name, and say, We are delivered to do all these abominations? What does that mean? All things are lawful for me. All things are lawful for me. <laughs> I, I just believe and receive. <laughs> I just believe and receive. All things are lawful for me. I choose. You can't judge me on this. I choose December 25th as the day that I want to worship the Lord. And all things are lawful for you. But not all things are expedient. All things are lawful for you. But all things edify not. And that is undisputed. And that means that a saint, a saved person, you and I, can do everything that the free gracer does. But see, the difference is, sooner or later, a saint won't justify themselves, but will rather justify God. And the free gracer, I've experienced this, mano y mano, they will keep the wheel going. To justify themselves. They will keep it going. They will keep it going. A saint will try that, but eventually, ah! where else am I going to go? What, what, what else? I'm sorry, Lord. But the free gracer, they keep going and going. A never ending cycle of self justification of sin. Cancer can be put into remission. But it cannot be truly eradicated. Unless it's like cut out. With the sword of the spirit. And Jeremiah 17 on verse 20. Seest thou not what they do in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? The children gather wood. And the fathers kindle the fire. And the women need their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven that's that's the queen of heaven the modern equivalent of the queen of heaven is the roman catholic mary okay and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods that they may provoke me to anger do they provoke me to anger saith the lord do they not provoke themselves to the confusion of their own faces Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, mine anger and my fury shall be poured out upon this place, upon man and upon beast, and upon the trees of the field, and upon the fruit of the ground, and it shall burn and it shall not be quenched. Re uh, Revelation chapter 22. Like I said, the, the, the thing that gets tiresome, the thing that, excuse me, the thing that gets wearisome is that we know it's just going to get worse. And it is getting worse. But see, there's someone out there, who it is that we don't know. It's about that one person. 
See, guys like we've been talking about, they're all about the, the, the shoe, the glamour, the glitz. They want the subscribers. They want to be well known so that they can get Satan's poison out there. But see, the saints, which is small, dwindling, because a lot say they are of us, but they're made manifest that they are not of us, and they whoop, go away, okay? It's about that one individual, okay? Today, and today, today, right now, we're not going to see a, uh, thousands of people saved in like, like in Acts chapter 2 or something like that. It's not going to happen. It's on a mano a mano individual basis. If one person, spirit, soul, and body, one of these guys who have been deceived by these idiot free gracers, if one would actually hear, search the scriptures, the Lord open their understanding to understand the scriptures and be like, wow, I, wow, I've been deceived. That, that's nonsense. That's heresy. Then everything will be worth it. That's what I, and this is something too, brother, take note of because. You will come into a time where it's like, what's what's the point, man? Why, why, why? It's like, dude, this, I, this isn't about me. It's about the Lord. And there is joy in heaven over one person, over 90 and 9 people who need no repentance. There's joy in heaven for that one person whom the Lord saved. Hopefully that's you. And you know what? And if any of you who I've made, named, you know, like that half-wit twit. <laughs> okay. And like I said, they'll, they'll resort to bullying. I mean, that's what they do. Bullying. Like I man mentioned, the one video I saw, I mean, that one dude, I mean, granted, now the one guy you should have left and not gone back. But the one guy who calls himself dude was just bullying this guy and using profanity and no one was batting an eyelash. They are of their father the devil. They speak of the world, therefore the world heareth them. We are not of the world. Revelation chapter 22. <clears throat> uh, Revelation chapter 22. Verse 11. This, and this is a comfort verse, if there ever was one. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. He that is holy, let him be holy still. You know, if 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 one person, spirit's own body, gets out of that before it's too late, then all of this is worth worth it. Just one. And I know for for a fact there have been people who have gotten out of that nonsense by hearing the truth. I I've, I, I know it. I know it for fact. And that makes it worth it. Because I'm telling you, you remain within that nonsense, that satanic heresy called free grace. You're doomed to hell. Because what will happen eventually is you will gravitate and find anything you can to justify yourself rather than the Lord. And what does it say in Luke chapter 16? And we will close with this. Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16. I can't see that. And here it is in a nutshell. <laughs> Verses 14 and 15 in Luke 16 and we'll be done. And the Pharisees also, who were covetous, heard all these things, and they derided him. And he said unto them, 
Ye are they which justify yourselves before men. But God knoweth your hearts for that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. And of course I've got to follow it up with this. Got to follow it up with this. Uh, John chapter 5. John chapter 5. <laughs> John chapter verse 44 John chapter 5 verse 44 How can ye believe? How can ye believe? Just believe and receive. Which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only. And the God who is of the authorized version is not honored by your disgusting, vomitous, cantankerous, cancerous, toxic poison called free grace. That will be it for this video. Thank you for watching this if you do. There will be links galore in the description box. You have questions, please feel free to watch. And remember, God loves you. Bye-bye.